fine. It's not time to talk about the figures that will be displayed in your thesis, in particular within the results section of your thesis, and about the legends that you will write to further explain such figures. So let me make one thing very clear from scratch, and that is those figures aren't there just to decorate your thesis. On the contrary, they will draw most attention from the reader, and arguably they are the most important portions of your thesis. So you should think very carefully about what exactly should go into your figures, and you also need to think very carefully about the order in that your figures should be displayed, that does not have to be the historical order of your experiments, not just, you know, what experiment you have done first and what you have done next. That's not that important. What really matters is the logical orders of your results, the logical order of how you can argue and make your story complete and logical. So you need to take a lot of time to assemble those figures and order them appropriately so that you can explain your results in the most convincing way. So here are some general considerations regarding your figures. First of all, you need to think about what images and what diagrams are most relevant to your thesis. Because, you know, some people make the mistake of trying to display as many Western blots as possible just to impress the reader by, you know, the sheer amount of your work and how hard you have been working. But, you know, that's not the point. Everyone knows you have been spending long hours in the lab. But believe it or not, people are not very interested in that. They are just interested in those results that really support the way you're arguing, that really support the most important findings that you're trying to report in your thesis. So do act in a selective way and find the most relevant images and diagrams that will support your findings and document them. Having said that, you need to be able to produce the raw data that went into these figures uh, when asked for that. So don't trash the raw data. Don't do that. Because you must always be able, even years after you have written up your thesis, it must be possible to document your findings by raw data that you have assembled while doing the experiments. Why is that so important? Well, because some people happen to manipulate their data. And maybe even worse, they even fabricate data from scratch. And you know, this has become easier and easier. If Let's be honest about it. There is Photoshop, there are similar programs. And so all you need to do is to upload uh, your images to such programs and then you can make these bands darker or lighter or add a new band. But you never, ever do that. Promise. Because if you do that, you will run into trouble and others will run into trouble. First of all, not only the technology for manipulating images has become easier and easier to handle. Also, the te technology to detect such manipulations has become better and better over time. And believe it or not, if you're trying to submit your data to a journal, they will check that. And they will try to find whether these images are reflecting reality or whether they have been manipulated. So, just to protect yourself, you should not even start doing manipulations of any kind to your images let alone fabrication of data de novo that did not exist. This has been spoiling careers. This has been spoiling the overall uh, scientific reputation that someone has. So don't even start doing that. Never, ever. Well, but it's not only about yourself. It's also about the uh, general readership of your thesis. If someone would believe your data, he or she might be trying to follow up on that and spend months or even years trying to reproduce your data or even build a new project based on your data. And uh, so you will waste tons of money and time, not only of yourself, but also time and money of others. So that's the other principal reason why you should never ever try to manipulate or fabricate data that goes into the figures that you will be displaying 
in your thesis. Now, when setting up and formatting your uh, figures, you will need to think about whether several panels, several portions uh, should go into your figure. So it's figure one panel, A, B, C, D, whatever. You should do that whenever you feel that several findings are in a close logical connection with each other, that you can really only appreciate the finding if you consider both panels together. Like, for instance, you have been knocking down uh, the messenger RNA from a gene and you are showing the result of that knockdown in one panel and you are showing that the knockdown worked by reducing the messenger RNA and or protein that has been synthesized in a different panel. That is a typical situation where you want to put both panels into one figure. In general, when writing up a thesis, you don't need to make multi-panel uh, figures. It's usually enough to have even just one panel or maybe two or three panels in one figure. But when you're submitting figures to journals, you're usually restricted in the number of figures that you're allowed to display in a paper. So that, in many cases, will force you to put more panels into one figure. But then still, uh, the art is to make them logically uh, connected, so there's one message that they would confer together. Now, when putting together the labeling of your figures, like labeling the different lanes on a western blot, or labeling the different columns that you have in a diagram, the art is to be minimalistic, so you don't do excessive writing of text into that figure. You really shouldn't do that. On the other hand, you want these figures to be understandable, ideally without too much reference to the figure leggings. A good figure is understandable pretty much on its own. It will still be necessary to read the leggings to some extent, but you should get a first idea even by just looking at the figures. It should be intuitive, and that's what a good labeling of the figures is all about. When writing these labelings, you want to use a sans serif font, you know, this, uh, like the, the Arial or like the Helvetica font, um, because that's what allows the reader to uh, still recognize the letters, even if the size of the figure needs to be uh, reduced in some way. And for the same reason, you also want to use a uniform size for labeling the figures. It doesn't look good if one panel is labeled in, in a large font and, and, the, and the next panel uh, is uh, labeled with, uh, with much uh, smaller letters. You want to do that in a uniform way. And in order to do that, it turned out to make most sense in case you need to paste a, an Excel file or another column diagram into your figure that you do the labeling of those columns and axes, that you do that in the program that you use to finally assemble the figure, maybe in a PowerPoint uh, program, then it makes sense to put the labeling there and not in the Excel file, because then you might run into trouble while choosing the right size of those labelings. Sometimes you want to include a complex image into your figure, say, a tissue section, for instance, with lots of cells to be seen and different uh, tissues together. Uh, in such cases, sometimes it makes sense to add arrows, arrows that are easy to recognize, that you added them and that they were not part of the initial image, and you just add these arrows to make it clear what you're trying to point out. So you make these arrows point to those cells that you think are different in two different experiments, for instance. So, arrows for clarification can be a good idea while formatting your figures. Now, what about the figure legend? Whatever goes below those figures to explain what you did. So, the figure legends should in any case explain what has been done to obtain the results that are displayed in the figure. That's quite obvious. So, you need to do that not only for each panel of the figure, but you even need to do it for each lane. At least briefly explain what is shown for each lane in that western blot or for each column in that uh, diagram. Now, what's a controversial issue, though, is whether you should only describe 
what has been done in order to obtain the results that are displayed or whether you should even describe what you observe. The traditional way is not to describe what has been observed because you leave that to the reader. You only tell the reader what kind of experiment has been done and you leave it to the reader to look at the figures and draw his or own, uh, her own uh, conclusions as to what can be observed in these images and in the figure. However, that's only the traditional view. More recently, say in the past five or ten years, it has become more and more fashionable to tell the reader what he or she is supposed to see on these figures. People tend to have little time, so they want to get the results quick. So you will find this often nowadays that the figure leggings even tell the reader what has been observed in panel so and so. So in order to solve that discrepancy, I suggest that you talk to your advisor first and learn about his or her preferences and then just follow them. Depending on what the outcome of that is, this also has a consequence for the title that you choose for each figure and for each panel. Traditionally, you would make a statement like upregulation of protein X under condition Y. You would only put that kind of uh, fragment as a title of your figure. That's a traditional way. Nowadays, you find it more and more often that the title would be Protein X is upregulated under condition Y. So that would be the statement. That's, the, that's what you find more and more often, although it's not the traditional way. So you need to find titles for, e for the figure as a whole and titles for each panel. And depending on your discussion with your advisor, you either make statements or you rather just put fragments of sentence that describe the topic that you have been addressing in the figure as a whole and in each panel. Now that's it about the figures and figure leggings. And in the next session, I'll be talking about the results section that should be written up corresponding to the figures that you have now assembled. See you then.